I'm going to read the first page of a California Christmas. And as a cinematographer, maybe you can interject and tell me what you think of different parts that I'm reading. Uh, exterior, Northern California skyline, morning. Uh, in a soft glide through a cluster of clouds, we ascend above multiple wine vineyards and rolling hills until San Francisco's skyline emerges in front of us. So I knew as soon as I read that, that was stock footage. I mean, I knew the scope of our of our film and and I knew that our only aerial would be, would be with a drone that couldn't get that kind of altitude and distance. And the funny thing is, is, is more than a few people have, have emailed me and their compliment is, oh my God, I just loved those aerial shots of San Francisco and the, and the Bay Bridge. And I'm like, well, thank you. I will pass those compliments along to the stock footage company, which, you know, they always take in good humor, but, um, but yeah, funny anecdote. They wondered how you got those. I don't, those... Think, they, I don't think they wondered, they trusted, but I had to, I had to, Pretty... I had to tell them that, well, that's the dream, but it's only a dream. <laughs> because you would have had to do it with, I mean. It would have been a helicopter. A helicopter, right. A drone know. at that altitude. Well, would a, that... Drone, a drone won't rise to that altitude and you couldn't get that kind of distance with it. You know, it's not going to fly into the over the bay and into the city. Right, okay. Yeah, because that's a, have you been on that bridge? Did you drive over that? I'm it's sure terrifying. I've been to San Francisco many times, but terrifying. I don't specifically. <laughs> Someone is afraid of heights. Okay. Well, in a car, <laughs> I don't, I only care when there's nothing between me and, and the, and the drop. Ah, if I'm okay. in a car or a helicopter, or I don't, you know, even if there's a high railing, I'm fine. We soar over the Golden Gate Bridge until we arrive at an upscale building. Interior of Van Aston Hotel Suite Bedroom Morning. Sunlight pours into a beautiful high-rise hotel suite as Joseph Van Aston, 25, attractive with egotistical confidence, enters the bedroom from the bathroom wearing only a towel. So, so when I, I, I heard that, I mean, I felt it was a penthouse kind of thing, which, which would have been challenging because, you know, when it's a, when it's a penthouse, I mean, uh, unless you've got the money to, to, you know, lower a scaffold outside the, the building, you can't light from outside. Um, fortunately, we, we landed in, in this really cool um, structure, which was part of a hotel. It was a, it was a banquet area in a hotel that um, we treated as a bedroom. And it was, not only was it not a high level, it was actually slightly submerged, but there was this really nice high window that you actually see in the movie. And um, that was, you know, I have these wonderful lights called M18s, which are uh, uh, these lovely HMIs. I mean, they're just such a go-to HMI. And and I, I put one out the window. And um, that was a scene we didn't have a lot of time for because they wanted us out of the hotel. We, we had somewhere else to be. Originally, I was going to do two HMIs out that window, and we just didn't have time. We just, we just did the one. And fortunately, it works perfectly. I mean, I, looking at it, I am like, I don't even know why I would have wanted the second one. And really, I would have used it to create more depth, but the director didn't want the, the camera there anyway. So uh, it all just worked out fine. But... Uh, yeah, I put that I put that light in there and it was, you know, pretty hot and spicy and I was a little bit worried that maybe it was too hot. Um, we modulated it some um, and, you know, then in the end, I've had some people say that that's one of their favorite scenes. He throws open the closet door, walks in. Interior Van Assen Hotel Suite, walk-in closet, morning. Joseph grabs an expensive suit off of the rack and rips the tags off of it. The towel drops to the ground around his feet. When I heard that, I figured, you know, um, closet, we we're probably going to have to build a little piece of a set because, you know, any real closet, you're not going to get the camera far enough away from him to get behind the, the clothes. I guess if you had a big walk-in, you could pull back and just set some clothes in the foreground. Um, but for whatever reason, I was thinking that, you know, we would have to build that. And, and as it worked out, again, it was a banquet room. And that door that he goes through is actually, it just goes back to a prep area where all, there are all these trays and, and um, you know, metal things and, and, and racks and crap. And, and we just cleared out a space and, and um, we shot a little corner, but it's actually a really big, big, like if you turned around, there's just, you know, tons of room filled up with junk. Um, 
and then we we you know we pulled the camera back and and we stole one of the wardrobe department's rolling um, you know uh, wardrobe hangers and we just stuck it in there. And uh, but, but again, we had to shoot it really really quick. And that was one of those things where like with his feet and the uh, the uh, towel dropping. I mean, literally, I was just trying to get it in place and like roll roll roll. It's like oh my god, you know. So we didn't get a, I mean, it, the shot looks fine, but I didn't get a finesse it. It was just kind of like whatever the lighting was by the time I got the camera down there because they're like, shoot it, let's get out of here, we gotta go. Interior Van Aston Hotel Suite bedroom morning. Joseph steps out of the closet fully dressed in his suit. He looks fantastic. Then looks at his phone with a cringe. Insert phone, Gemma, three missed calls. I think they ended up cutting that out. I don't think they've got the Gemma stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Well, well. no. I mean, I'm just saying. I, I, I don't. I don't even know. If, I don't even remember if we shot that. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I thought he had some kind of a phone, but well, he has it when he talks to his mom. But does he have it in this scene? Maybe he does. Oh, uh, I'm not sure because he's dealing with this this gal that's in his bed. Yeah, I know so. a chunk of this scene was cut out, and I'm trying to remember which piece it was. I think it was the stuff in the closet. It's either cut out or it's truncated. Oh, okay. Well, here we have Jasmine O.C. in a sing-song voice. Joey! Joseph looks up from his phone to the bed. There is the gorgeous Jasmine, 20s, naked, in the bed, just waking up. Before she can speak, Joseph grabs a room service menu and brings it over to the bed. I remember, I remember when I read that, I was like, what's this naked stuff? Because I'm thinking <laughs> a Christmas movie. I, I don't know. Um, it's California. I, I Come know. on. Well, you know, Lauren wrote it, and, and I think that girl is a friend of theirs, so I, who knows? But, I mean, she was wearing a, what do you call it, a, a camisole, uh, so she wasn't naked. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, that was, that, was, that was funny. I remember, I remember thinking, oh, my gosh. You know, because anytime you do nudity, it's like there's some sensitivity and clear the set, and, and that's all good, but it slows things down, you know, because you have to clear the set. And I'm just thinking, well, that's going to complicate stuff. But, you know, in the end, like I said, I think she had a camisole on and we just did the, you know, the, the blanket in a quasi suggestive way. And, and, and there you go. And, and I think that, you know, I really like the way that that, that sun looks, that the, that the light looks. And it's, it's so funny because I think when I really get it right, you know, it feels like I didn't do it. And I'm just looking at it going, wow, that looks cool. I wonder who did that. You know, I don't, I don't feel the ownership of it when it when it really just you know goes straight down the track like that and and you know the, the flare in his in his face which is a little of a, a stylistic non sequitur because I don't think we have a lot of other flares but it just worked so well in that scene and it was so beautiful and and maybe if I'm being honest it's a, a tiny bit gratuitous but I think everybody liked it and I think it's pretty so there you go Joseph handing the menu breakfast breakfast is on me checkouts at noon she grabs the lapel of the suit jacket and holds him close joseph denies her kiss with a smile he hovers joseph. i have to say i have to say he played that so much better than i pictured it in my mind oh, i just love the way he played that scene and but the coverage and it really turned out a lot the way i pictured it in my mind when i read it i mean i felt that it really you know, because things don't always do that. I mean, sometimes you you picture it one way, and then you get there, and the location's different, or the actors play it different, or the act, you know the director wants to cover it different, and it's not quite what you picture. But I that that scene really did play out kind of the way that I imagined. You know, apart from the fact that that his the way he did that that kiss avoidance was just so so much better than what I imagined it would be. Right, and she says Joseph continued soft. I'll call you. Jasmine makes a pouty face. And I think if I remember correctly, she says, no, you won't. Yeah. Yeah. That was perfect. Yeah. Okay. That was an interesting, it was an interesting way to, to introduce Joseph. And it was, it was wonderfully succinct. I mean, you, you said a lot, you said a lot in that, that little tiny scene to just to set up what kind of a playboy and cad he was. And, and, I think that that made his um, transition more meaningful, you know, when you saw that he actually was falling in love with this, you know, tough country girl. Right. 
who came from two separate worlds, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. He was used to always hearing yes. Yeah. She was probably always used to hearing no. She wasn't taking any shit from him. <laughs>